see, this is what happens, Matt, and I told this the last time that I signed an expansion of the medical marijuana program. Every time you sign one expansion, then the advocates will come back and ask for another one. Here's what the advocates want. They want legalization of marijuana in New Jersey. It will not happen on my watch ever. I am done expanding the medical marijuana program under any circumstances. So we're done. This is another one of those narrow group think policies put forward by the legislature. Um, and I'm not going to continue to expand it. Because what they want is legalization. They're not getting legalization under this government. They'll have to elect somebody else. We're back. That was, of course, Governor Chris Christie on this past December announcing his refusal. You heard it there outright to sign a bill that would have allowed registered medical marijuana patients in New Jersey to buy the drug in another state where it's legal and bring it home until it's available in New Jersey. Well, this very same day that Christie made this announcement, Philip and, and Paula and Joanna said goodbye to their 15-month-old daughter, Sabina Rose, who lost her battle with a severe form of epilepsy called Dravai Dravai syndrome. Any hope of bringing out-of-state medical marijuana to treat their daughter was also lost that day. Well, Christie reiterated his opposition the very hour Sabina was taken off life support. In an article written by High Times for the Huffington Post titled The Ballad of Chris Christie and Sabina Rose, her mother, Paula, said this of Christie. He has ignored my many attempts to meet with him. Everyone in his office who answers my calls knows who I am, and they blow me off. My emails are not answered. He can ignore me and my husband, but we aren't going away. And he doesn't scare us like he scares everyone who works for him. I hope he signs this bill. Well, Paula Joanna, who lost her daughter last December, is taking the fight to Governor Christie and fighting for sick children all over the state of New Jersey. And Paige Figgy is a Colorado mother who did have access to marijuana oil for her daughter, who suffered from epilepsy as well. Her daughter, Charlotte, is now 99 percent seizure free as a result of medical marijuana. Let's start with hope. Uh, Paige, tell us about how it works. So, Because I always thought marijuana was kind of something that gave you a little pleasure, a little high, sued you through cancer and late in life situations, hospice situations. I never understood that it had this particular property you could deal with seizures of epileptics. You, tell us what you know about its positive potential, Paige. Right. And, and that's how it's um, been used medically was appetite and cancer. Um, what it, what we've found is this uh, oil that we're using on Charlotte has almost no THC. So it doesn't have the euphoric uh, high associated with it. Um, but it is working to stop her, her seizures. I think it's a, a combination of the anti-inflammatory and the neuroprotectant of the of the cannabis, the cannabidiol, one particular part of the cannabis plant. Paul, Joanna, when did you discover this pr property that could have helped your daughter? How did <clears throat> I never heard of it until this horror came my way about your situation, what happened to your family, but and the loss of your daughter. But when is this? When did this become medically available to help kids who are epileptic? Uh, in New Jersey, it became available uh, the last summer. There was a bill passed in August to allow edibles for children. Uh, my husband did a lot of research when Sabina was diagnosed with Dravet syndrome and. You know, he brought a YouTube video to me of of Charlotte and Paige, and he said, you know, this will help Sabina. And I said, are you kidding me? It's marijuana. And uh, after I watched this short video, like, I was convinced that, you know, this is what we needed for her. Well, what well, what do you think it should be done? Tell her, what is, what is the tr lesson of your tragedy, your family's tragedy for, for this country? There's a difference between recreational use of marijuana, which has obviously been passed in some of the western states, and it's very much a conflicting thing with most of us about whether to do it or not because of people who are vulnerable to, uh, to addiction for worse drugs. But the question is, what do we do about the medical use? Is there a way we can I – mean, Christie was there pounding away saying this is just a way to get recreational use accepted. Is that the case? Are people who are arguing for medical use just pushing it as a gateway to recreational use? I don't think so. I think the, me the medical marijuana program in New Jersey is extremely broken. Um, there's, there's probably fraud. There's a lot of things that are going on. Kids aren't getting what they need. The dispensaries are always being held up. There's always a problem. Um, it's, you know, Chris Christie is not against medical marijuana. He, there's just so many regulations that he wants on it. It makes it virtually impossible. Um, well, can you go to a doctor and have it prescribed? I mean, how complicated no. is it if you get it? Your, your, your general practitioner can't, do, your regular family doctor can't prescribe it. No, you have to, for pediatrics, you have to get a 
a letter from your pediatrician. Then you have to get a letter from your specialist. So we got one from her neurologist. Then we had to see a psychiatrist to make sure we weren't exploiting her and her medical marijuana. Then from there we had to what, see. What does that mean? That you were gonna you were gonna use it? What yeah, does that I mean? was. If I was, if my husband and I were gonna get, you know, try to get a medical marijuana via Sabina so that we could smoke pot, because yeah. I don't understand anyone who wanted to smoke pot recreationally would go through all those hurdles just to smoke pot. That sounds right to me. Paige, tell me how it fits in with the uh, now that you have in Colorado, you've got recreational use. How do these two do separate? Do, do you see them as separate issues? They are separate issues for for us for our nonprofit organization. We don't we're not in the recreational market. We're actually in the hemp market. This isn't even a medicine. Uh, it's a hemp supplement. It is so non psychoactive. What we're what she's talking about. What I'm talking about is a hemp supplement. But medical marijuana is is I think very different from recreational. When the state of Colorado went recreational, the the applications for for a medical red card in Colorado went up that month. So there's still patients that are legitimately needing this as a medicine, THC, CBD, whatever. Um, I'm not seeing that. I live here. I'm not seeing that abuse. I don't have a, a personal interest in the recreational thing, but I certainly think it's less dangerous than alcohol. And I think we can all agree <coughs> with that. Well, we might disagree on that. Let me. I, I, this is troubling for me because I've seen a lot of uh, dope use, and I never thought it would encourage the ambition on the part of people. But that's just my view. I, I think it, it slows down your willingness to live life fully. Anyway, that's my view. I'm sure I'll hear from people who disagree with me. On this issue of medical use, I'm all for it. Paula Joanna, thank you for joining us. Thank and you. Paige Figgy, thank you for the education you've helped give us as well. For more information on this story, go thank to you. our website, hardball.msnbc.com, and we'll be right back after this.